Lauren first, though he didn't know it then. Didn't understand the dead look in her eyes. That unnatural, wooden, lurching motion as she moved about the lab. Of course, it was too late when I learned to read the signs. Most of the crew were in its power already, and I'd paid a terrible price for my blindness. Was I the last? I could hear their footsteps on the snow outside my cabin. Leaden steps, moving as one. Not safe here. I'll make for the lab. Ah! Ah! Pain, throbbing from the gaping hole in my stomach. That could have gone better. Dr. Turner, open up! My eyes, swimming. I almost black out again. Come on, Jim. There's nothing to worry about. Harris. Open this fucking door, James. Or whatever it is that's living in his body now. I clenched my teeth against another wave of agony. Keep it together. First things first, gotta get this bleeding under control. No use opening it. Nothing human out there for a thousand Ks. Jim, come on Jim, open the door. I promise everything will be okay mate, alright? Harris was a good bloke. Shit. Open the fucking door! I can't stand listening to that thing out there. A rusty screwdriver rattled around in the toolbox. A collection of papers on the ancient fungi, buried deep beneath the ice, would have been the culmination of a decade of research better part of our lives together. I'd never finish now, but perhaps I can pass on the torch. Found a small blowtorch. Found some mean looking wire cutters. Okay Wilkins, what you got for me? Kneeling down over the body, I noticed the telltale inhuman signs on his face. He was also wearing one of those armbands I'd noticed on the others. Oh God, the stench coming off him. Almost losing consciousness, again, but desperate, I persist. I find the key in his jeans pocket. Looking at the radio, my heart sinks. A stray bullet had smashed right through it. Shit. The lock clicks open. My eyes flit hungrily past morphine, antibiotics, bandages. Someone had been storing lab samples in here again. Strictly forbidden, but the lab fridge had been on the fritz for weeks. The sample caught my eye. Thin, scarlet membrane stretched over a pulsating, bulbous growth. Ah! I wave away the cloud of crimson spores, eyes, nostrils, throat burning. I cough, and the action triggers a dagger of pain from my wound. Still, I manage not to black out, and at least the cabinet's open. Morphine would only slow my mind. So clenching my teeth to suppress screams of agony, I injected some penicillin around the wound before bandaging it up. I shoved the barrel under the wire. Some old wiring hanging low. 
Reaching up to cut the wire, I feel something brush against my mind. Vast and terrible. That mere fleeting whisper of contact. A freight train roaring through my consciousness. I was drowning. From deep beneath my mind, I could feel that force animating my limbs like a monstrous puppeteer. Lungs burning, I struggled to the surface. God, was that what the others had felt? I've got to get help. Despite the tremor in my fingers, I've managed to undo the screws. Need to cut out this fused wiring first. Snipping away the fused wiring, I have a vision, collecting fusiform stem samples with my wife. Her laughter. Let's see. Should be working now. I grabbed the receiver. This is Dr. James Turner, from Station Theta 661. Do you copy? The welcome sound of a friendly voice comes through the static. Oh, thank God. I need evac ASAP. There's been... Something horrible has happened. Yep. Tell the crew, do not land until they see... Repeat. Do not land until they see Dr. Parker. Copy. Over and out. Thank God for that. Wavering on my feet, exhausted, I sink to the floor to wait. Sleep falls like a lead curtain. Snap awake. Something very wrong. The cold. My mind. My body stiff and numb. The pain like hot lead being poured over my hands. My feet. My face. I struggle to move my limbs, tearing myself away from the frozen floor. Tearing up a decade of work. I throw it in. The cold. The page is lit. I stand close until feeling returns to my face. I'll lose some fingers, but I'm alive. For now. Is that the evac chopper? time to mess with that. It's quiet out there. Time to go. I turn the wheel when I hear shouts and bodies slam into the other side. I throw myself at the door but too late. Their worm-like arms twisting their way in. Oh god, don't know how long I can hold it. I almost dropped the blowtorch trying to light it. But it flares to life and I hold it against the arm wielding that knife. I almost drop it, again, as the smell of burning hair and pork crackling fills my nostrils. Screams from outside and the knife clatters on the floor. I make a lunge for the knife. Wielding the cruel hunk of steel, I shut my eyes and start hacking. The muffled screams from behind the door, the sticky warmth splashing on my arms. Finally, I feel the door slam close behind my back. It had worn the same armband. 
they all did once they turned. The thing lay there like a pale worm. They're still out there. I'll need a weapon if I'm going to make evac. I'll leave it alone. The door's stuck fast. Need something to lever it. Full box of cartridges inside. It's loaded, and I'm ready as I'll ever be. Weapon shaking in my hand, I swung the heavy door open. He's coming out. Jim, put it down. Look, Ben's here. No. Dad, it's me. I'm coming in. No. Mum called before. She... I just got in. No, Ben. Get out of here. Run. Dad, put the gun down. They... They killed Kathy, Ben. Dad, it was an accident. They... They told me what... Look, it wasn't your fault. Dad, what are you doing? I... Can't fight it. Much longer. Dad, you need help. Please. Drop the gun, Jim. It's your son for fuck's sake. Can't think. Are you... One of them now too? What? Hands shaking. Every synapse in my infected mind urging me to pull the trigger. Could I have been wrong? I'm so tired, Ben. Dead. And exhausted. I let it take me. 